Hey guys, here's a clip from an episode that we did on the Dr. Cliff show talking about earwax removal and this one might be disturbing. So I have this patient come in yesterday and everything's going well from a hearing perspective, but he says, I'd really like if you'd take a look in my ears. And I said, I do that every time, don't I? And he goes, no, today's different. And I said, whoa, what's Wait, going on? Was this an established patient uh -huh. of ours? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Go ahead. Sorry. I, he tells me that he goes, he sees his primary care and his primary care says, you've got some wax in your ear. Let me take that out. And first of all, I'm just like, okay, if he had any wax in his ear, it'd be very, very minimal because I just saw this patient a few months ago and I clean his ears out every single time I see him. But he says that he takes some sort of tool, digs around in there, says it's the most painful experience ever, says he immediately puts his hand up to his ears and there's just blood just oh. pouring out of his ear. And his doctor says, oh yeah, ears are sensitive and it'll be fine, you'll be fine, it'll, it'll stop later today. This was nearly three weeks ago, and he's still experiencing some lasting pain and discomfort oh from that. Said he couldn't even hear for a few days because he believed that the blood had pooled up enough in his ear to completely occlude his ear. And then he said, but it opened up and I can hear now. I just want to know if it's all out of there or not. So we get to use video otoscopy for this. And so for those that don't know, otoscopy is just when we use our tool to take a look in your ears. Nearly every person has had an otoscope placed in their ears at one point or another to, to take a peek. And we have standard otoscopes in the office, but we also have video. What this allows us to do is take what we're looking at in their ears and actually put it up on the computer screen and show them. Because many people have never seen what the inside mm -hmm. of their own ears look like. I don't really know why you would, right? But there are certain instances, like in the case of serious infection, where I, I go, you got to see this. Mm -hmm. Or when I find a couple of domes stuck in someone's mm -hmm. ear and I go, no, there really is a dome in your ear. Let me prove it to you and show you. Well, in this case, I got to use the video otoscopy to show this patient what all had happened in his ear canal. And the first thing I see is just this wall of deep red black, which generally means dried blood and it is nearly blocking his entire ear canal, almost 90%. I can get a little tiny bit of visualization up at the top, but otherwise nearly completely occluding in there. So this patient had had some pretty significant damage done in getting this earwax out. Luckily the eardrum was fine, but after I had removed some of that dried blood, the ear canal had been rather banged up. And it was a really powerful moment because the patient said, that guy's never touching my ears again. You're the only person that's ever touching my ears again. I said, that's a pretty good plan because if you don't have the tools or the equipment to really mm -hmm. visualize what you're doing, you can do a lot more harm than mm -hmm. good. What did you do to actually clean out his ears? Well, I ended up using, we have some headlamps and, and loops in there and I did end up using a curette in this instance because I didn't want to introduce water because I didn't know if there was still an open abrasion mm -hmm. in that ear or not. So well, I was able to pull that out pretty easily. Well, and you still don't know either if the provider that he had seen ruptured an ear. Uh, right. right. At this point, I can't like, see beyond can't there. See. I could have run a tympanometry measurement, but using the curette, I was able to mm -hmm. take that out, realize very quickly that the eardrum was completely intact and that the, the damage was in outer ear canal were issue. You, but Were you able to use the video otoscope to also take pictures and save those pictures of the damage as well? Oh, sure did. Send them right over to the patient. And I mm -hmm. said, you can do with these what you'd <laughs> like. Because he said, he said, uh, I don't know if I want to bring this up again to my provider. And mm -hmm. I said, well, here's the pictures so that you can at least say, hey, this was my experience. This is what happened to me. I'm maybe I don't want to take this any further, but just know you can't you can't just be digging around in there yeah. and not seeing what you're doing mm -hmm. because here's what I was left with from that mm -hmm. interaction. That's what that's something that too that makes me super nervous about these like at home earwax removal kits as well. Even the ones that do have like the cameras that are attached to it, the depth perception that you get with those is absolutely horrendous. And the ear canal is a really sensitive area. So sensitive. And to just go digging with anything, mm -hmm. you know, even a cotton swab, the amount of damage that I've actually seen recently with cotton swabs, I've seen several people, I'm looking in there and I'm like, you do have a, you know, a scab in here that has these like striations, which is often associated with the cotton swab because it does have like a, it does leave scrapes on the bottom of the ear canal. And I've seen actually like three people in the last two weeks or so that have all had abrasions and cuts from just cotton swab use. And, and it makes me so nervous 
that other providers are just kind of digging digging for gold, really, yeah. in and your ears. Yeah, if you don't know what you're looking at, if you don't do uh, removal, earwax removal mm -hmm. regularly yeah. as mm -hmm. a provider, it's very good to do it well to where you're not hurting the patient because that is not a normal experience. So mm -hmm. anyone watching no, this and is no. like, oh my gosh, I don't want anyone to ever clean out my ears. Like that's not how it's supposed Correct. to go. No. You just have to go to someone who, this is what they do, mm -hmm. right? And I kind of sympathize uh, with the uh, primary care physicians and all that because they probably don't do a lot of earwax removal. Mm -hmm, no. um, we do it five times a day yeah, on, on patients. And when we're talking about the technology, so I love the video otoscopy aspect of looking in their ear, seeing what they have earwax wise, seeing what they have, if there's a hole in the eardrum, being able to take an image of it, show it to the actual patient so they can see what I'm seeing mm -hmm. and I can counsel them better uh -huh. based on that. But I have to say that here, when I first started my clinic, I had only curettes to remove earwax. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything else. And I had patients come in with completely impacted earwax inside of their ears, and I was just not able to get that earwax out completely. And yesterday, I had a patient come in, no complaints of an issue with her ears, with earwax or anything like that. She's like, I use Q-tips, it's not a problem, they work great. I look in one of her ears and I can see this impaction inside of her yeah, ear. And I'm like, wall of and, wax. and she didn't believe me. So I had to show her mm -hmm. on yeah. video, see like, this is what you're doing with the Q-tip. You're actually, you're not hurting your ear, but you're packing in the earwax. And it went all the way down to her eardrum. So I couldn't use a curette to pick it out. And irrigation for like a lot of clinics who don't do earwax removal a whole lot. So primary care physicians offices, mm -hmm. right? They'll take a syringe. My grandmother had earwax removal done. They took a syringe of water that was cold. Okay. They I... blasted it into her ear. What did that do to her? Did she vomit? Oh, I bet it made her spin like she crazy. She was dizzy. She and she was dizzy. It had like a lingering effect. Yeah. For, I mean, she's in her 80s. She had a lingering effect of dizziness for days mm -hmm. after that. Because for those of you who are unaware, when you introduce cold water into one ear but not the other ear, it creates this convection effect of the fluid inside of the vestibular semicircular canals and you your brain gets mismatched signals of movement so yeah. what does your brain do well it makes you feel dizzy mm -hmm. because of that and they didn't actually even get out the earwax. Oof. So there's been a, a new technology that was invented called the irrigator. So the best pun in all of audiology. <laughs> yeah, right. It's pretty great. <laughs> you plug it in, you have it set to the human ear canal body temperature. Mm -hmm. And then when you go in and you're actually irrigating out, flushing out the ear in a very controlled way, it doesn't create any dizziness. Mm -hmm. And you can control the amount of pressure that you're using instead of just using a handheld syringe mm -hmm. where you have no control over that. Yeah. Or it is minimal. the best. It is the best best because a lot of people will say, well, okay, fine. You look in the ear, it's completely occluded. And why can't you just use the curette? Well, in certain cases, you can just move some of it out. But the problem is, is that we're really trying to get a visual on the eardrum and the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane is extremely thin and delicate. It's almost as thin as a single strand of human hair. So we can't just be poking around in there because mm -hmm. one wrong poke when we can't see what we're doing could lead to disaster. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, being able to use irrigation to use some warm water with some gentle pressure, loosen that up and move it out of the ear without having to use like tools. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, you're able to look in and go, oh, okay, I, now I've got some visual of the eardrum. Okay, I can use a curette for the rest of this because now I know how far I can go. Mm -hmm. But without that information, you can't be doing that. So the irrigator, oh, it's my favorite ever. Well, and the other piece of that too is that, you know, I, I don't know how this happens so frequently, but you know, earwax, builds up over time and oftentimes it's so hard mm -hmm. because it's been there so long and it really is like sealed it is with the ear canal and like like we said the ear canal is a sensitive area if i start tapping on something and really like peel it i'm peeling it off the canal wall that's not a comfortable experience. It's like a band-aid getting ripped off. But you have to do it slowly because again, you're trying really hard not to disrupt the eardrum. Right. And so to pick that out can often be really painful. And even with the irrigator, sometimes there's been wax that's just so hard and has been there for so long that we're doing rounds of irrigation. We're doing rounds of earwax MD eardrops, which by the way, if you've never used earwax MD to remove earwax at home, literally my favorite product that They're has ever great. been invented. But, and we're doing this multiple times and like really pulling it out layer by layer as we can loosen it up. So really like, 
having the equipment and the tools that you need for something like that is so important. Even something like suction, which I feel more clinics have than they do like the, the irrigator, but utilizing suction for very, again, very specific types of earwax is actually the safer option still than going around and, you know, using a curette and, you know, doing it that way as well. So having all of the tools needed to treat each different type of earwax is really, really helpful. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that clip. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you want to catch the full episode, I will have it linked in the description.